Okay, welcome everybody. Hello, hello. Happy Thursday, January 27th. Welcome, Jason. Nice to see you. Lovely to be here today. Thank you for having me. For sure. So we're just going to take the first couple minutes, folks, to allow those who are wrapping up their lunch to join. Um, really drop in your location. I'm always curious to learn uh, where you're calling in from. So drop that in the chat and uh, also would love to learn what you folks hope to learn out of this session. So drop your location, drop what you want to get out of today's webinar. Um, the amazing team behind the scenes is going to take a look at that and we will, uh, we will make sure that we're doing our best to answer everything and anything you want to know about employee recognition. So we'll get started at 104. Uh, I'm seeing some folks on the West Coast, fellow Torontonians. Jason, where are you joining us from? From Vancouver. And I see there's, uh, I have some fellow Vancouverites here as well. There you go. A good Canadian representation. It looks like somebody from Dubai as well. Outstanding. Yep. International. Yep. Delhi, New York City. Welcome, welcome. Hello from Costa Rica. Slightly well, jealous. Yeah, you know, the weather I think I probably think is happening in Costa Rica right now. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. It was beautiful, but uh, we're we have this huge fog bank that has rolled into town. So yes, yes. Well, I was saying to my team right before I'm looking at snow. It's snowing quite a lot in the uh, in Toronto right now, and I'm happy I walked the dog earlier than uh, than this snow. Yeah, totally. <laughs> I see the comment yeah. Cindy said, uh, Cindy from our audience today, she said, I wish I was in Costa Rica. So do I. <laughs> Ditto. Yeah. Absolutely. I almost forget what it feels like to have sun. <laughs> yeah. Well, just one more minute. Thanks, folks, for dropping in your location. And again, feel free to share what you want to learn today. Um, always curious about that. I know Jason is as well. Um, innovative ways. Jason's definitely going to be talking about that. Uh, we've got a couple poll questions, so we'll be seeking your input as well um, throughout the conversation today. And of course, leaving it for open for some Q&A at the end. So with that, we're just about at time. So again, thanks everybody for joining uh, us at HUME to learn more about rewards and employee recognition done right. So I'd first like to open and thank you to the individual who put this in the chat. This is something that is very important to us at HUME as well. Although we are virtual, we always make sure to acknowledge the land. So I'm going to open by recognizing the original stewards of the lands on which we now live. As I mentioned, uh, I am in Toronto. So it's important to acknowledge the land we are living on in a path forward towards truth and reconciliation. The City of Toronto acknowledges that we are on the traditional territory of many nations, including the Mississaugas of the Credit, the Anishinaabeg peoples, and is now home to many diverse First Nations, Inuit and Métis peoples. So with this acknowledgement, we hope that we can all continue to educate ourselves and our teams and reflect to build a path forward towards truth and reconciliation. I'd also like to take this time to acknowledge the amazing folks behind the scenes who have made this webinar possible. So first acknowledging the bucket list team as well as Humi's content marketing team. So thank you so much to the folks. They're also going to be moderating the chat, flagging questions to myself and to Jason, and ultimately are responsible for bringing a great online uh, experience to all of us on the webinar today. So let's talk about bucket list and acknowledge, of course, the experts that we have here today. So bucket list rewards is the number one ranked employee rewards and recognition program that creates recognition solutions for companies of all sizes and sectors, such as tech, healthcare, retail, manufacturing, and more. Their platform makes it easy and fun for employees and managers to recognize and reward one another for milestones, for achievements, and ultimately for a job well done. Bucket List enables companies to reward employees the way that they actually want. So very excited to pick your brain, Jason, and to learn more about how we can do this. 
So in terms of why, uh, why we're here today and a bit of a rundown of, uh, of the event. So before I introduce Jason, let's talk about why we're here. For those of you, of course, you know that we all need validation. In fact, a lack of validation can make all the difference in where we choose to spend our time and energy. And that's especially so when it comes to choosing where we work. An employee recognition program that's aligned with your company's values allows employees to receive recognition year round in the way that they actually want. And of course, that's why I'm so excited to have Jason from Bucket List here with us at HUME today. So other details before we get started, uh, we are of course using the chat function, but if you have specific questions, check out the bottom and use the Q&A feature. I see there's already two uh, questions in there. Thank you so much uh, for those of you who have dropped those in there. That's fantastic. Um, and I would also like to take this time to introduce myself. My name is Andrea Bartlett. I'm the Director of People Operations here at HUME. And with me today, I have Jason. And Jason, I am going to pass the virtual mic over to you to introduce yourself and uh, get started. Awesome. Yeah, thank you so much for the, the warm introductions and the context setting. Um, and also, uh, in the intro, you asked what people are hoping to learn about today in the, the chat window. And some of the comments included things like non-monetary ways to recognize employees. Uh, we'll definitely be addressing that. How to measure the success of a recognition program. We'll certainly be touching on that. Um, so, and, and as uh, Andrea said, as new questions pop up, please, please feel free to throw them into the Q&A window. I love answering questions and I love more of a conversational format. But to, to get into it, um, I'll just share a quick background on myself and then we'll get into the best practices. Um, I'm a, a serial entrepreneur. I've built uh, three hyper growth uh, tech companies. Uh, I am the CEO over at Bucket List Rewards, which is an enterprise rewards and recognition platform. And something I'm super proud about and that is just hot off the presses is that uh, Bucket List was recognized as one of the top 50 best companies to work for in Canada by great places to work. And the significance of that is if we're in the HR space, I think it's really important to walk the talk to like, you can't, I don't believe you can really truly really be a culture HR platform unless you do a great job. Um, uh, recognizing and taking good care of your team. And it's something I, I totally embody and believe in. Um, <clears throat> in terms of who Bucket List works with, uh, as Andrea said, we've worked with everything from Fortune 100s all the way down to startups. Uh, so we've worked with, uh, we're working with the, the Royal Bank of Canada, one of the largest banks in the world, multinational tech corporation, uh, hospitals with many tens of thousands of employees and tons of startups as well. And the reason I mention this is uh, we'll be sharing stories and examples and best practices from all these types of organize organizations. Okay, let's get into more of the fun part of this whole session and talk about how recognition can uh, be of use and value at your organization. So I want to acknowledge, I appreciate there's probably a very large number of participants on today's call. So for example, maybe you're a, a CHRO at a, at a healthcare organization and you're wondering, does recognition work? Will recognition work here at my hospital? Uh, maybe you have a large number of uh, healthcare workers interacting with patients. They're not near any near any tech devices. They're super busy. Will recognition work here? Maybe you're uh, a director of HR at a tech company, and you're wondering, um, you know, my team's gone hybrid these days. They're never they're never in the office. Will recognition work here? Um, and so, quick question for you, and first poll question: Do you think recognition really works? And there's a few different answers on screen. Why don't you go ahead and uh, just check off one of those boxes and maybe we'll, we'll let that run for a few more seconds. And then um, I'm not controlling the poll questions today, but I can probably help prompt them if we want to close that poll down. Thank you. And uh, I don't know, can you share the results as well? Well, up on screen. <laughs> awesome. Okay, so I love it. Uh, the audience is a friendly one. It looks like 85% of you think recognition uh, does work. There's still a subsect, around 15% of you who said that you're not convinced. And, and duly, no duly noted, duly noted, it's important to recognize that some organizations you might be more skeptical. Maybe you have a large number of steel workers. Maybe you're not sure whether it'll be a fit for your organization. Um, let's get into and talk about why it always works. Um, So yes, recognition always works. I've personally seen it, seen it deployed in all types of organizations. 
And if you look at the landscape, all the best companies in the world uh, are doing it, whether you know, you're looking at Google or, or Disney or even some, uh, some of the great startups that are happening. Um, and why does recognition always work? Uh, because everybody needs to be appreciated and needs a sense of uh, needs a sense of belonging. There's uh, there's something called Maslow's hierarchy of needs. It's a great model of, of human behavior and motivation. And down near the bottom is uh, the first kind of levels are uh, physiological needs like food, water, warmth, and rest. Right above that is uh, safety needs, so security and safety. And above above that is a, a, a need for belongingness, appreciation, and a sense of love. And so everybody needs this. And what employee recognition does an excellent job of is checking these two boxes. And what I often say is uh, you can just drop the word employee recognition from recognition because it's fundamental to being human being, whether you're a child, a parent, whether you're the coach on your daughter's soccer team, or whether you're a leader at work, recognition is foundational to who we are as humans. Um, However, I do appreciate many of you are, are in the seat where you might need to convince skeptical leaders, a skeptical leadership team. Um, so what is the true ROI of a recognition program? I wanna get into that a little bit. So here's some stats that we've seen from, from real deployments. Uh, we worked with one healthcare organization where after rolling out the program, they saw a decrease in voluntary turnover by more than 40%. And I think that's particularly relevant today. A lot of organizations are experiencing the, uh, the great resignation. Um, and even if you're not, everybody hates to lose an A player. And a recognition program is one of the most powerful ways to counteract that. And then on the flip side, uh, recognition, recognition fundamentally is a motivational platform to help incentivize specific behaviors. So you can increase uh, employee engagement. You can increase uh, customer referrals. You can decrease uh, customer churn. Employee recognition is a really powerful way to motivate specific behaviors. And we'll get into more of that in a few moments. Okay, so we've kind of talked about the ROI of recognition and fundamentally why it's important. Um, let's get into uh, one of my favorite tips. Uh, what's one of the best ways to get started with recognition? So for those of you out there who aren't doing any recognition yet, I'm gonna give you an idea that ideally you could implement today. There's no cost associated with it. You can just get started with it. And if you already have a recognition program, I'm gonna share some tips on how you can potentially do it better. So uh, it's a concept we call leadership storytelling. And, and what does that mean? What does that entail? So first, it's really important to create a format where leaders uh, can recognize employees on a regular basis. So a couple of tips and best practices. Uh, many of you may have a regular fireside chat or all hands meeting. What you wanna do is carve out a small section inside of that meeting, maybe five minutes, where leaders can uh, share good news and recognize employees for living company values. And it's really important. You wanna tell a really compelling and engaging story. So for example, I don't know how many people have been on this call, have been a part of a, a fireside chat that may have run you know, 30 minutes, an hour long, uh, maybe 10 minutes into it. You start to lose interest, you're checking email, you're checking Slack messages, uh, a great employee recognition story that will not happen. So how do you tell a memorable and impactful story? Uh, I'm gonna share a few more best practices around this. So there's a format to telling a really compelling story called the hero's journey. Um, it's one of the best ways to make a story inspirational, inspirational and memorable. Um, what's interesting, even if you haven't heard that phrase, the hero's journey, you've all been exposed to it because all the best stories in the world follow this format, uh, whether it's a book or whether it's a movie. So if you happen to like, you know, Lord of the Rings or Star Wars or Harry Potter movie or books, they all follow the hero's journey. And the way you can use this in the workforce is you put your, your employee into that hero's journey and you frame, you frame the story around this. Uh, so what's the, what's the basic context? So you'll have your employee who's just experiencing the ordinary world. The employee will have some sort of inciting incident. Uh, this can be a conflict, this can be a challenge. There'll typically be some sort of response um, there will be an ordeal or climax. And then at the end of the day, you have some sort of really compelling resolution to said story. So this is all very theoretical so far, but I'd love to give you guys a real world example of how, uh, how this uh, has come to life. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to share a story from Starbucks and uh, a really compelling employee story from this organization. So at Starbucks, there was a barista named Crystal and a customer, customer named uh, E.B., um, and Crystal worked at a Starbucks in Leesburg, Virginia, 
And one of her regulars was EB, and EB was, uh, was deaf. So Crystal really wanted to ease EB's burden and make the customer experience effortless. So in her personal time, she started studying American Sign Language. And eventually when she had some confidence with it, she handed EB a note saying, I've been learning uh, American Sign Language just so you can have the same experience as everyone else here. EB was so overwhelmed by the gesture, he had the note framed at home. Um, so I think this is an amazing experience of, of somebody going way above and beyond, taking insanely good care of a customer. And now I have another, another question for you. Uh, we'll put it up on screen as a poll question in a second. But um, and the question is, did, uh, did Crystal do a good job of, li of living Starbucks values? And really quickly, the Starbucks values are on the right-hand side of the screen. They include creating a, a culture of warmth and belonging where everybody is uh, included, delivering our very best in all we do, holding up ourselves to be accountable for results, acting with courage, challenging the status quo, et cetera. So go ahead and answer that question and I'll let that run for a second or two. And if we wanna close down that poll and then share the results. Awesome. So <laughs> clearly everybody in this call is in, is in alignment that Crystal did an amazing job of, of living the Starbucks value. And that, that story is so compelling. And I'm going to give you some bonus points. When you're recognizing your heroes in these regular meetings, how do you really bring these stories and myths alive? So we can close that pull down. Thank you. So turn your leadership stories into myths that can be shared and relearned. Um, for example, uh, I'd encourage you to record these stories as videos and share them with all staff. You can share them internally and externally on social media, write emails and blog posts about it, weave them into your training and onboarding. It's one thing to talk about customer service and say like, hey, you know, at Starbucks here, we value customer service. It's an entirely different thing when you can set the bar and tell these epic stories or narratives internally. Um, so that whole leadership storytelling uh, is one of the best ways to create uh, memorable, engaging stories inside your organization. And why is memorization so important? Because your staff will forget. There's, uh, I find this fascinating. There's something called the Ebbinghaus forgetting curve. And in summary, uh, humans typically for, uh, forget more than 50% uh, within one hour of hearing it. So for better or worse, as good of, as good as of a job I do today, roughly one hour from now, you're gonna retain 50% of what I just said. Uh, however, when you are communicating with people, stories tend to be way more uh, compelling. In fact, stories are 22 times more compelling than stats. So storytelling is a better way to stick in the minds of your employees. Um, and it's a really great way to create these internal memories. Cool. Okay, so that was one of my favorite best practices or tips. Um, I'm going to switch into some more tactical uh, things you could potentially execute inside of your organization today. And what I'm going to be talking about next is a process for how to roll out a really successful recognition program. And I'm going to hustle through these pretty darn fast. The, the framework has four general steps. So we have a planning phase, there's customization, uh, there's a functionality. So what programs do you want to implement inside your organization? And then measurement, how do we measure a successful program or not? So when it comes to planning, um, I want to give you a simple framework. What you want to do up front is identify the goals. Uh, you want real clarity on your employee audience. It's really important to get uh, an understanding of their communication preferences. And then you want to define some tactics and pillars based upon the above three. And I'll give you some samples. Uh, these are from, from real organizations we've worked with. In terms of goals, uh, rec employee recognition is fantastic at increasing employee engagement. It's also really good at breaking down company silos it can create, it can uh, incre increase a feeling of recognition. It can uh, increase customer satisfaction and net promoter scores. Um, in terms of your employee audience, it's really important to understand obviously how many employees are, are working at your organization. You wanna find out how they wanna be recognized and how they wanna be rewarded. And more on that in a second. For communication preferences, you don't wanna reinvent the wheel. Recognition is already happening inside your organization naturally. Maybe it's via email, maybe it's via instant messaging. You want to build a program that weaves into your current and successful programs. And then lastly, you want some, you want to define the tactics and pillars uh, to execute your program. Um, it's also really important and definitely best practice to survey your staff. Um, we have a, a, a survey template we're more than happy to share with everybody on the call today and we can send out as a, as a link as one of the, the show notes or takeaway notes. Um, the surveying of staff is so important. 
because you can find out, are you doing a good job with recognition today? Um, you can find out how do staff want to be recognized. So not everybody wants to, in fact, be recognized publicly. Some people love the recognition, but they don't necessarily want it in front of 50 or 100 people. Um, and also really importantly, how does your staff want to be rewarded? Um, there's a bunch of uh, sub questions you can ask as well. And again, we're happy to share the template on this. So once you have the clarity on your goals and objectives and exactly how to reward and recognize your team, it's important to define the communication tools you're going to be weaving into. Um, and as I mentioned previously, recognition happens very naturally in certain communication tools. Don't try to force your employees to do something brand new in conjunction with the recognition program. Uh, so for example, uh, here's a variety of different communication channels that you may or may not be using. A lot of us are, are using meetings or virtual meetings these days. Instant messaging is really popular amongst uh, knowledge-based workers. Uh, maybe you're using intranets, et cetera. Um, and what you want to do, again, is to choose your favorite communication tools and weave your program into that. And what does that look like? Let's say you're a, a knowledge-based worker, or maybe more specifically, you're a tech employee. Maybe your employees are working remote from home or coffee shops. So they, act, they have access to, uh, to laptops. There's a lot of use of instant messaging, whether that's MS Teams or Slack. Maybe there's a ton of email taking place. Again, you want to plug into these tools. And I'd love to give you guys some tips and best practices on how to effectively do that next. So what are some good ways to plug into these tools? So if you happen to be uh, heavy, heavy users of say Slack or MS Teams, what I highly encourage you to do is to create a new channel called recognition or core values, invite all staff to, to join this and enable them to recognize one another, include company values with a hashtag. Um, we've, we've done this with a number of different organizations and you'll tend to see a really high rate of participation. You don't need any add-on tools. Obviously there are tools like bucket list you can use if you want to, but you can do this today. And it's a, a really effective way to get staff recognizing one another. Um, I also think it's fantastic to, to integrate the program into things like intranets, or you can call them brag boards. This can be just a great way to, uh, to take those recognitions. Maybe for example, it's the, the leadership stories, you can plug them into your internet as videos and you can share them with a broader audience. And then lastly, again, maybe you're a tech worker and you're doing regular uh, huddles or fireside chats. Um, I'd encourage you to publicly recognize staff for the great work that's happening. Something we do internally at Bucket List, we do weekly huddles and we actually invite uh, staff to share success stories about their peers uh, on a weekly basis. Um, the, the huddle lasts roughly 30 minutes long. We start off with good news, which is about five minutes. And it's my favorite part of the, of the meeting. There's all these really colorful, happy, funny stories emerge, and it's giving employees a chance to thank one another. Cool. Next up, we're going to be talking about functionality a little bit, uh, which includes the pillars of a, of a, of a successful program. Um, and what I want to start off with is peer recognition. Um, so why is peer recognition so impactful and useful? Uh, so a lot of times as leaders, we'll miss the great work that might be uh, performed inside of our organization. If everybody can participate in the recognition program, you're going to see a much higher rate of participation, much higher rate of participation. Um, and then if you enable staff to recognize one another for living values, they're going to feel more connected to your uh, corporate mission. And this is uh, one of the key pillars of a good program that will help lower voluntary turnover. Um, when rolling out a peer recognition program, I'd highly encourage you to, you, you to take a few minutes to train your staff on best practices. Some of those uh, best practices include making your recognition program uh, timely, specific, so asking your, your employees to tell many stories about their colleagues. Uh, there's a certain amount of frequency you want to include. Often recognition, depending upon how it's done, will, will last roughly one week. There's this concept of resonance that, you know, you can pump somebody's tires, you can tell a really compelling story, but it typically it lasts about a week and then it kind of fades away. And that's why it's important to do on a consistent and ongoing basis. And then lastly, you always want to tie in the company core values, just like we did with a Starbucks uh, example. Another uh, really powerful or impactful program uh, is in performance rewards. And performance rewards are just creating uh, some sort of reward and acknowledgement around key uh, behavior. Um, and for example, maybe you're a financial service organization and sales are really important to you. Creating something like a loans officer of the year award can be a powerful way to recognize staff. 
Um, maybe you're in technology and customer satisfaction is important. We, we have a, a, for example, at Bucket List, we have something called the Net Promoter Score Award, where anytime we get a nine out of 10 or a 10 out of 10 on a deployment, uh, the customer success officer in charge of that deployment gets a badge and a, a public recognition and an award as well. Um, in manufacturing, maybe you want to recognize things like safety, and absolutely, uh, we can help lower or increase uh, safety standards. And then maybe you're in healthcare, or things like patient care awards. In summer, you can customize performance rewards to ensure and lift uh, behaviors around whatever is important to you. Um, next up, and this is one of the questions or comments in the chat, was uh, what are some popular rewards? Um, I'm actually going to go in reverse order here. So again. Ask your staff how they want to be rewarded. I'm going to talk, talk, talk about free rewards first. Uh, some of the kind of popular things we see is time off or paid time off can be a, a really powerful way to recognize staff. Um, small acts of service, having your manager bring you coffee for a week can be really, or a day, <laughs> can be a really great way to recognize staff. Uh, things like VIP parking, maybe you still have a, maybe your workforce still comes into the office. Maybe it's uh, having staff join and have lunch with the CEO or the senior leadership team, or even participating in a, in a leadership offsite. Company swag can also be a great reward. Um, side part on this, I wouldn't cheap out on company swag. I think if you, for example, we, we, we've gotten Lululemon swag, they have an amazing corporate uh, program, by the way. <laughs> um, and we provided branded swagware for all our employees and like, the, the, in any company huddle, I would say roughly 50% of team members are wearing some sort of piece of swag. So not only is it comfortable and fashionable, but the team actually likes it. Um, so those are a few examples of some of the cool kind of free rewards we've seen. Sidebar, uh, we've seen some large organizations roll out a recognition program with entirely free rewards. It's a really effective way to manage budgets. So as a large enterprise, it enables you to launch a program and not necessarily allocate a huge budget to the rewards uh, component of the program. Next, I'm gonna talk about uh, personalized experiences. Um, before I get into examples, the, the whole concept of rewarding somebody in a personalized manner is to make it impactful and meaningful. Um, for example, I uh, at one organization with a tech company we worked with called Advisor Websites. Uh, there's a woman there named Julie who had always wanted to go whale watching. And as her reward, they ended up rewarding her with a, a, day, a day of whale watching. And she ended up taking her husband. And she described it as one of the best memories she could have it had in her entire life. So if you personalize the rewards, it can become really meaningful in that employee's life. And those are the sorts of stories that get told inside and outside of your organization. Uh, and this is a great way to promote and increase employ employer branding. Um, so uh, the key is to make it personalized and things that I've seen that are really popular are gain, uh, tickets to uh, sporting events, whether it's NFL or basketball to whatever that employee's passionate about. Uh, spa days, a lot of us are working our tails off these days, specifically in healthcare, for example. Uh, my wife uh, works for a children's hospital and um, giving somebody a half day off, sending them to the spa is an insanely powerful way to thank them and make them feel really cared for. Uh, maybe somebody loves things like uh, adventure or, or adrenaline, things like flight lessons. I've seen people go on flight lessons and again, their mind's blowing. The key to this is personalizing it. Um, you don't have to go whitewater rafting or, or skydiving like that. That could terrify the wrong person to be frank. It's all about personalizing the moment, but when you do it right, it becomes insanely memorable and uh, you will, your, your employees will thank you forever. Cool. So I'm going to package it all up and share one real world story on uh, the inputs and outputs. Um, so we worked with uh, one organization called Home Instead, for example, they're a market leader in senior care. They rolled out an enterprise recognition program. They called it Pure Sieve so that uh, they had a big peer recognition part of it. They had a manager spot bonus part of it. They recognized things like last minute shift pickup. They, uh, they also recognized things like patient care. And of course they had an office safety contest. Uh, what were some of the outcomes? They saw a, a reduction in employee turnover by more than 40% in some of their care homes. And that's a, a huge and very impactful real world output to, to recognition. And they were also very happy with the, the program itself. Um, cool, and now we're gonna move to the measurement, which is the last piece, and then we'll get into Q&A. 
so there's a ton of different ways to measure recognition programs. Things I'd encourage you to keep track of is engagement. Um, so how many people uh, are participating each month? It's also important to break that out and look at management participation. So which managers are recognizing, maybe which, which managers are recognizing and which aren't. What you'll find, and you've probably seen with other programs, is when leaders participate in the program, employee participation goes up as well. Like wherever the leaders go, the team will typically follow. And so you want to make sure managers are in fact participating. Uh, and then if you do decide to hand out rewards, it's often really important to keep track of what's the distribution rate like, what's redemption rate like, et cetera. And then lastly, uh, when it comes to advocating and helping sell through a recognition program, first, uh, before I get into any of these four bullet points, your management team or senior leadership team will have their own priorities. If you can align the recognition program and support their goals, you're going to be far more likely to get a, get, going to get a yes on that program versus a no. Um, and that's why I think it's so important to get really clear about the ROI of a program and how it can specifically help an organization, you know, how it can lower turnover, increase engagement or lower uh, customer churn, for example. Um, but a few extra bullet points. It's important to present your perspective on employee recognition, uh, explain how recognition can help meet company-wide objectives, gather and present suggestions for a recognition program, uh, share reports on how employee recognition can help with overall company success. As a part of this, when you survey your team, if you can ask in, uh, for real anecdotal stories of who's been recognized and who's been not recognized, a lot of times what surfaces is you'll have great employees who haven't been recognized for years. Um, and if great employees who value recognition aren't recognition, aren't being recognized, there's a really high chance you could lose them. Um, for example, uh, pre-COVID, I was out in Pennsylvania working with a company called CEI. And at the kickoff ceremony, the leadership team was recognizing the staff. And uh, one woman, when she got recognized, started crying. I was, I was like, what's, what's going on here? Uh, and she got up and she said, you know, I've been working here for eight years. And that was the first time somebody said, thank you. She's like, I love this company. I've given my heart and soul to it. And this is the first time I've been told thank you. And, you know, had senior leaders known about those sorts of things happening, they're going to be way more likely to roll out a recognition program because they just they become more aware of the need. Cool. Uh, so we covered a lot of ground today and we're going to switch over to Q&A next. So I'm, I'm super excited to get into some questions. Um, Maybe a quick question uh, for the audience, and you feel free to uh, type this into the chat window. Um, I'm always really curious what your favorite piece of today's presentation was. So we talked about why recognition always works. We talked about how to use stories to tell uh, stories to recognize staff. We talked about some sample goals for recognition program, how to integrate, integrate a recognition program into your favorite tools. But yeah, in the chat window, what did you guys like? Go ahead and type your answers in there. And uh, I'm always keen because it helps us better craft uh, our next presentation. Normally this takes a second or two for people to start responding. Sample goals, storytelling. I like the stories, using stories. Awesome, awesome. Yeah, sample goals, wonderful everybody. Love the team channel suggestion. Awesome, great to hear stories and videoing it. Yeah, sample goals. The idea, oh, look at all flowing. Four tips to make it impactful. Tracking of winners of recognition programs, this often gets overlooked 100%. <laughs> awesome. Well, I'm, I'm really happy to hear there's some uh, great takeaways here. But uh, with that, I think we can switch over to the Q&A portion of today's lesson. Yes, we can. Uh, well, first of all, thanks, Jason, for walking us through that. I think it's a rare opportunity to pick the brain of an expert like yourself. Um, we have quite a few questions here. And uh, maybe a few, um, I don't know if you want to stop sharing screen. All right. That's my old man move there. <laughs> Just like I forget to unmute myself in uh, Zoom meetings. <laughs> yeah, we're still doing that. Don't worry, I, I do it too. Um, so there's some questions that are more tactical. There's also some theoretical questions. Um, so we really have the full gamut here. So um, you did briefly touch on this in, in uh, some of the previous slides, but something that oftentimes those of us who want to implement a program uh, face is the fact that leadership struggles with the cost and then not only struggling with the cost, but struggles with the value of it. So that ROI you were talking about. So 
again, can you talk about how and what we should be looking at when we're measuring the success of a recognition program? Um, yeah, absolutely. So I think uh, when getting buy-in, leadership buy-in for a program like this, I, I, would, I would take a consultative approach and I would, I would ask your senior at your SLT, your senior leadership team, uh, what matters to them right now. And you'll hear things like uh, culture is almost always kind of on the top three. And they might, just, might not say culture is important. They might use different words like employee engagement, recruitment can be super important. Maybe it's retention, but I'd get clarity on whatever that is. Um, and then uh, using that information, I'd craft a, a narrative on how recognition will help support those goals and then how it also how it supports uh, companies in every scenario. Um, and some of the, the factors that I have seen almost universally matter is, especially with this great resignation, and I mentioned this up front, a lot of people, even if you're not experiencing a lot of turnover right now, everybody hates to lose an A player. Like I, I use that phrase specifically because almost every CEO I know of, like they, they, they've lost a senior vice president who they love sorry, an SVP of sales, or maybe your product engineer, whoever it is, and there's a huge cost associated with that. Um, and if you clearly communicate how you can lower turnover, just the ROI of lowering of turnover can, can more than 10x prove the ROI of a recognition program itself. So maybe it metaphorically costs $10 to, uh, to buy a recognition program, but the ROI is more than $100 of savings. And there are ways, we have to Sidebar, we have a, an ROI calculator. We're, more, again, more than happy to share with everybody on today's call that we can send out. So there's a little more clarity on, on what the impacts of a specific program are. Mm -hmm. But uh, in summary, ask what matters to the organization, match the goals with their goals, uh, come to the table with a like, real world savings. And then running an employee, uh, rec employee recognition survey is also a really powerful way um, to let management know how good of a job you're doing with recognition. A lot of organizations think they're doing a great job with recognition, but they're not. And, and having that real world evidence to, to let like the, the leadership team know whether you're doing a good job or bad job allows them to make better decisions. Um, there's a, I'm gonna get the, the numbers kind of wrong on this, um, but there's a stat where there's a huge misalignment between what, uh, for example, I think it's roughly around 80% of managers feel that they're recognizing staff on a monthly basis. However, it turns out that over 90% of staff feel like they're not recognized yearly at all. Like th there's like this huge absence or void. And a lot, so that just, those, those numbers roughly communicate that there's a huge disconnect between what's in the minds of your leaders and what's really happening in your company. And if you can surface the data, it becomes much easier to, uh, to get buy-in for a program. So survey your team, align the program with uh, leadership goals, and then clearly communicate the ROI. Yeah, okay, fantastic. So gonna stick to another really high level question. I love this one, because it, it speaks to something that you, you mentioned in the beginning around just the, the psychology, yeah. uh, words and recognition. So this one's, this one's uh, I'm gonna read it exactly uh, as it's written um, and would love your take. So Maslow's hierarchy of needs was discredited due to its focus on the individual needs and not on social and collaboration. And as social beings, the team would not survive without a collaborative society. Do you think that needs are set on a hierarchical, hierarchical pyramid? Do you think that humans' needs for belonging is key to employee recognition programs? Um, so I think there's a few questions in there. Um, and, and I do appreciate the, the comment on Maslow's hierarchy of needs. What I know, for example, as a dad, is that recognition is one of the most powerful. So I'm going to break it out from employee recognition is talk to real world. So I'm a dad. I have a three-year-old and a six-year-old, amazing little girls. There's, there's different ways to motivate and incentivize behavior. I can come in with a stick or I can come in with a carrot. And the carrot doesn't have to be a cake necessarily. It can just be kind words. And what I've observed and what I've heard from other parents for example, is that recognizing great performance is an amazing motivator to so that you'll see more of that behavior out of uh, my, for, for example, my daughter, or as a leader at work, when I recognize and create heroes and these hero stories inside of an organization, 100%, you're going to see more of that behavior in the future. Um, and not only that, like when you tell a story, uh, a great story about an employee, other employees are thinking, I want a story told about me too. Um, 
And then lastly, uh, let's remove Maslow's hierarchy of needs from that entire equation. If we can consistently lower voluntary turnover and increase engagement and create fun, playful work environments, uh, not as, sorry, I'll remove that word playful, uh, enjoyable work environments, those are all super positive outcomes. So even if you were to remove Maslow's hierarchy of needs from that, that conversation, uh, the, the impacts of recognition are, in, in my experience, uh, are undeniable. Okay. I love that. And I agree. It's something that when we're looking at how we're motivating our teams at HUME, yeah. it's something that's pretty fundamental. And so the next question um, actually is something that we're talking through live at, uh, at HUME right now, which is around how all of these pieces integrate and you can't really have a good recognition program without knowing what your values are so that you're recognizing the right thing and performance is integrated there. And so the question reads, what best practices can you suggest to integrate recognition with coaching, self-development, and performance management programs versus a standalone employee recognition program? Yeah, so, I, so that's an excellent question. Um, and, I, and to, to be clear, I think recognition, depending upon like what model you're, you're using to look at your team and engagement and culture. Like I, I think some models will have like 12 pillars, some will have like six or five. Recognition is just one pillar and like an overall like sort of HR strategy. And, and I think um, to be frank, I would, I'm, gonna, I'm gonna back up. I don't know if I'm the best person to talk about uh, performance management, but what I'll try to do is provide an answer on how you can weave it into that over the overarching umbrella strategy. So what do I think uh, recognition is really good at in addition to all the other things I mentioned earlier? I think it's, does it can do a great job of bringing your core values alive. And for example, in, in a good HR strategy, you should be hiring on your values. You should be evaluating your employees and teams are living those values. And a good platform, if you happen to choose a recognition platform, they should provide reporting on like uh, which employees are living, which values, to what extent, how are the teams living those values? And then you can then weave that into a performance management program. Um, and then in terms of performance management, for example, uh, I've seen I've seen companies evaluate uh, on a semi-annual basis uh, how much employees are living values, not living values, and that's another great way to weave in a, a recognition program. So, yeah, I, I sorry, I, I struggle to give a really solid answer on that because I, I don't think I'm the best person to talk about uh, performance management. I can only talk about how we fed into that as like a one conduit, if that makes sense. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And I know with, with HUMI, one of our first steps is always to talk to our, we call them HUMI goes, talk to our HUMI goes first. I think that that's often a forgotten step where, you know, there's a problem, you have the data that backs the problem, you talk to senior leadership, and then you go and you execute on launching a recognition program that doesn't actually speak to what your employees are looking for. And so um, just in terms of tactically, that's where all of our people programs and recognition really is a people program. That's where everything starts. That's the beginning right. of the conversation. Oh, good for you guys. That's amazing. Yeah. Yeah. And I, I think uh, speaking to that point, like the, the recognition, you're absolutely correct. Recognition should feed into and connect with and enhance what's already there, for example. And that's, that's why you should weave in your company core values, your corporate mission statement, whatever the performance goals are, you can plug those into the program as well, so. Yeah, yeah. Okay, so um, this question is specific to a business that, uh, that is on the floor. So they're in the, the hospitality industry. So uh, recognition uh, for them is, is challenging to do electronically. So what do you suggest for this work environment? Yeah, that's a, that's a great and actually pretty common question we get. Um, so for frontline employees, um, if, if, you, if your company, company policy allows for it, uh, I'd, I'd enable recognition to happen in a, a mobile format. So for example, and again, you don't have to use bucket list, but we have a, a mobile app that where managers can recognize staff and that'll pop up in their, on their phone. So they can just be going about their day-to-day -day work and they'll, they'll see the recognition on their phone. Um, you can even have it SMS enabled. So text messages get sent out. Uh, we've worked with some companies like Peter Piper Pizza. They have around two and a half thousand staff, 50 locations. And it's really cool. They, so managers will be going around and when they see an employee doing some great work. They'll take a little photo of that employee, they'll write a little recognition and hit post and that pops up in the activity feed. 
So recognizing people via mobile. And then if you remove that whole piece of it, uh, just recognizing staff. And I, I used to work in, <laughs> at Earl's and uh, Joey Tomatoes way back in the day. And they, they didn't necessarily recognize performance when I worked there. Um, but they'll often have like shift kickoff meetings where they'll pull all the servers around and like, how many mimosas are you going to sell today? Uh, that could be a great opportunity to publicly recognize your staff where the leaders start saying, you know, like last shift, this is the great work that I saw. So um, I choose, uh, again, connecting, sorry, uh, to go back to the presentation, use whatever formats are already working for you and recognize staff in those, those formats. So if it's shift, uh, pre-shift meetings, random shift meetings, uh, that's a great chance to recognize staff. And then for frontline workers, mobile recognition is just an awesome way to, to recognize them as well. Mm -hmm. Okay, we have just over 10 minutes left and 10 questions uh, that we have to answer. So we'll see how many we can get okay. through. You have to be concise. Okay. Um, so what are some suggestions for breathing new life into a recognition program that works well, but maybe just needs a refresh? Yeah, so recognition programs can fail for a whole bunch of reasons. Um, I'll share some tips on, these are just broad tips that tend to work well in all cases. So just gently reminding staff that there's a recognition program in place can be powerful and a good way to do that. Again, I mentioned up front that if there's a regular recurring meeting, whether it's weekly or monthly, it's good to keep it a little bit more tight in uh, recurrence uh, to bring up the recognition in a, in a public format and have a leader do that. So leadership recognition on a regular basis. Um, adding rewards can be a powerful way to increase engagement. Um, Peer-to-peer -peer recognition is a really powerful way to lift up engagement as well. Because if, if a lot of times uh, what I've seen happen is companies might only enable managers to recognize good rewards or senior leaders, but um, which, which excludes all the frontline employees doing all the hard work. And they'll, they'll be the ones who often see their colleagues doing good stuff. So uh, supporting peer-to-peer -peer recognition is also, or sorry, turning on or enabling peer-to-peer -peer recognition is a powerful way to get good engagement as well. So yeah, peer-to-peer -peer, uh, public recognition are great ways to drive engagement. Okay. Um, love this question. Of course, Humi supports small to medium-sized businesses. So we often talk with uh, employers who employ under 50 uh, employees. So this question is specific to small businesses. So we're a small company with 21 employees. Many of them are shy and shy to speak up and young. Any ideas on how to get people engaged and celebrate others? Uh, so um, I would ask to prompt, I would I'd provide training for them. I'd provide a format for it. And uh, I do some like gentle role playing. So prior to rolling out a program, invite everybody. Uh, I don't know if, if it's a smaller company, if you're in person or remote hybrid, whatever. I provide some training and show them those best practices. So like, how do you recognize a peer? You keep it timely, specific, frequent, and tied to core value. And then have everybody start just role playing and talk about the good work that they've seen from their peers or colleagues. So you train them, give them context, and then provide a format for it. And in my experience, that's a fantastic way to kick off a program and get uh, get really good engagement. Fantastic. So the next two questions are around uh, favoritism and dealing with negativity and rewards. So I'm going to ask both of them. Uh, any tips for ensuring peer recognition doesn't reward popular colleagues over product and overproductive ones? And how do you deal with the negativity if other employees don't agree with the recognition of certain employees? Yeah, in terms of uh, an egalitarian approach, this, is, this can be one of the values of measuring your program effectively, because as a leader, you can come into it, you can see broadly who's been recognized, who's been not, and then it's really easy to go ahead and recognize the, the high performers who haven't been acknowledged lately. So reporting is a great tool to lean on and make better judgments. And if you have really robust reporting, you can even send out reports to your managers so that they can see like from my team of 10, I've recognized these three people more frequently than these seven. And it's a, again, a really powerful way to just educate them on who's been recognized and who's not been. Um, and then in terms of uh, how do you keep it from getting negative? So normally with those, those hero stories, like the, the big recognitions, you won't see too much negativity coming out of that. Like if you think about, again, the, the idea of the, the, the hero's story, the hero's journey, people would like pretty rarely hate Bilbo Baggins or, or you know, like, like th those are hard to have a lot of negativity um, regarding like negative things happening inside of a recognition program. 
uh, with our platform, we have like uh, uh, um, all sorts of filters in place to stop any sort of profanity from popping up. And uh, there's also filters to stop abuse. Um, if you have a manual program, again, you're going to need to have some sort of reports to keep a good eye on what's happening in there and to monitor for abuse. So you can do it manually or via reporting. You can keep an eye on uh, on abuse that might be happening or any, any sort of negativity. Mm -hmm. Which segues nicely into the next question. Um, so you had mentioned having a Slack channel. And they're yeah. curious as to how you moderate to ensure the content remains focused on recognition. So good one. Um, one of the best ways to do it is, uh, again, if you're gonna do it manually, provide training, ask employees to, uh, to weave in uh, core values. It's, it's hard to like tell a weird or, or disjointed stories if you have to directly connect it to a company core value. So training, attach it to a core value and just provide some like light guidance in that training. Like, uh, we, we appreciate stories between 50 to 100 words long. Um, and then if you have a platform, you can manually put a lot of parameters in place to ensure that there's high quality, uh, high quality and a lot of integrity to the recognition as well. So Jason, what if some peers are routinely left out or maybe underperforming? How does a recognition program tie into that? Um, so for the uh, left out piece, again, I think reporting can surface the individuals who might feel left out. Um, and for employees who are performing negatively, in my experience, a lot of times your team, if it's a, a peer recognition program, your team will know, they will know who's performing and not performing. And the people often who are not performing will not be recognized as frequently. And in my experience, that's okay. Like, like if somebody's showing up late, you don't need to thank them for their, their hard work necessarily. And so I think recognition just like naturally surfaces like your A players and or people who might need a little bit of coaching, for example. Um, so reporting helps you identify the people who are left out. And then there's a bit of natural selection that happens, which isn't necessarily a bad thing. Mm -hmm. Okay. So a few tactical questions. Um, so two actually that are around uh, the taxable benefits. So the first question is, how do you track things like, you know, monetary gifts or gift cards for CRA income because they're a near cash yeah, for sure. So we, we have a bunch of reports that we produce and we've seen two formats. Uh, companies can pay the taxes on behalf of the employee uh, or the employees can, you can allow your employees to pay it for them. Uh, in the event where you want to pay the taxes for them, you can we produce a, a report on any interval people want and you can run it through as imputed income uh, in whatever your payroll software is like ADP or, or QME or um, whatever people might choose. So. Yeah. Okay. Um, and this question is surrounding the communication for uh, taxable benefits. I know sometimes at the end of the year, uh, employees can be surprised around that awesome uh, yeah. recognition reward that they received um, is, uh, is indeed a taxable benefit. So can you speak to how you manage the communications um, to the employee regarding taxable benefits uh, when rewards are offered to them? Yeah, I, so I, good question. It's a, it's a small tactical item, but it's like, it, you, <laughs> surprise, you have to pay a, you have to pay a, a tax on that reward we gave you. Um, I would be really clear in the launch of the program on how taxes are going to work. So whether, again, you're going to pay it for the staff or you expect them to pay it and also have a lot of clarity on, uh, on timing of that. And so like as a part of the kickoff of a program, we have a bunch of like, pre-written emails and posters and, and even a presentation we use that speak to those sorts of details. So for people who are doing it manually, just be super clear and upfront. Like, is the tax a benefit? Yes or no? How is that going to impact you? Um, and then I think you'll see less surprises down the line, so. Perfect. And just in the last couple of minutes, um, if you want to pull up the, um, the presentation again, just as the final reminders here, and yeah. I'll read another question uh, around implementation while you're doing that, Jason. So sure. from your experience working with different organizations in different industries and sizes, what is the average timeline for implementing an employee recognition program at a company? 
Yeah, that's a, it's a good question for uh, companies under 100. You can launch a program sort of one week to four weeks typically. Uh, depends how much leg, sorry, that's once you have leadership buy-in uh, and once you have the strategy and pillars defined. It's like So once you have the hard work done, <laughs> it doesn't take too much time and effort to get a program up and running. Uh, if you're 100 to 1,000 employees, I would allocate uh, probably two to six weeks um, or more. And thereafter, like, 1,000, 10,000 plus, it's going to take more time as well. Jason, what is the adventures of Rabbit and Peanut? I'm kidding. Oh, did you see that? <laughs> Not, that is a book I've written for my daughters. It, uh, it's very silly. <laughs> I love it. I love it. I just it, think it's the wrong screen. That's it's all. funny because uh, <laughs> it's actually the story of how my wife and I met. <laughs> And there were, we're, we're, I'm a squirrel and she's the rabbit. And anyways, my daughters love it. I don't know if they've connected it to us yet. Um, good eye. <laughs> That's the first time I just I, swear I had to ask. <laughs> um, um, while you're, while you're pulling up the other, uh, the other slide, just to wrap up with four minutes left here. Um, again, we have a poll here. Um, about uh, whether or not you want to learn more about bucket list rewards. So feel free to complete that poll, folks. Um, and Jason, again, while you're pulling up the slides, um, another question here around favoritism. And I think this one is important when it comes to how we are recognizing uh, fellow colleagues. So how do you manage that personal experience piece of rewards so that they're not perceived as favoritism by fellow employees? Yeah, I think that's, uh, there's just a, a, just a small amount of positioning there. Um, you can have a rewards catalog that's available to all staff and they can just pick and choose whatever rewards they want. Um, and if you survey your team before rolling it out and you weave in their, the rewards that matter to them, everybody's kind of taken into uh, account. Um, and uh, again, you don't have to use bucket lists, but we have like 4,000 reward ideas and we're really good at including your suggestions into the platform, but it, is, it doesn't matter. Survey your team, ask how they want to be rewarded, have, provide them with a catalog of cool rewards, and then just let your employees choose is one way to remove any sense of favoritism or bias. And then also, um, if you like, if you're a manager and you know exactly what your employee wants, uh, it's pretty rare you'll, you'll have pushback from other employees when you're just, when all you're doing is taking great care of an employee. Um, so if you tell a great recognition story, uh, you know, maybe it's a, a nurse who's worked, you know, triple overtime, they've saved a life, whatever it may be, and then you happen to give them a half day off and send them to the spa, you'll, you, you'll see anything but a negative uh, uh, throwback from that type of recognition. What your staff will see is you're taking insanely great care of your team for the right types of behaviors. That's awesome. Well, with that, um, Jason, I would really like to thank you for all of the input that you gave today. I think I know I learned um, more information about uh, employee recognition. Sometimes it can be, you know, daunting just to know where to start, whether you're refreshing a program that already exists, whether you're in a completely different industry and don't know what you should be thinking about first. So Really appreciated the thought that you put into answering all of the questions. Thank you folks for uh, providing us with some of those questions. Um, and with that, Jason, thank you again for your time and speaking with us today. Yeah, Andrea, thank you so much for, uh, for having me. Uh, one mini comment, if anybody has any other questions, feel free to reach out to me on LinkedIn. I will 100% do my best to answer all the questions I can. Um, and at the end of the day, uh, the session is all about the, the attendees. So uh, if I have missed anything, please feel free to reach out. I love, I just love helping companies out and building good culture. So thanks for having me. Love it. Thanks, Jason. And folks, we've linked in the chat um, some important information. And for those of you who are stressed about tax season, feel free to yeah. join Humi on February 3rd at 1 p.m. for our upcoming tax season webinar. But that's it. That's all. Thanks again for joining and have a great rest of your Thursday. Take care. Take care, everybody.